This is a review for Wondershare Video Editor for Mac. I previously yeah. reviewed the Mac version of their Video Converter Automat. When you first launch you are greeted with this welcome interface where you can open a recent project or create a new project that is standard 4x3 or 16x9 widescreen where you can exit. Let's hit this. Let's hit up here. There we go. Now the interface is actually quite nice. It reminds me a lot of uh, one of the older versions of iMovie. If we click here we can drag a clip down to timeline. To add a clip you can click this or you can go to file import media and import videos and photos or add audio files. You can also use the shortcuts here as well. You can also get to resources here, new project, open project, and open recent here. Save, save as, close. You can also order it if you're using the trial. Check for updates. As you can see, I'm using the latest version at the time, making this video, which is 4.4. I mean 4.1.1. Go to preferences. As you can see there isn't a whole lot of preferences available. Open a snapshot folder when a snapshot is taken in and a snapshot is basically kind of like checkpoints as you go along to back up. Open the output folder when exporting is finished. Play a sound when the conversion is finished. Check for updates every week or every day or every month or whatever. Save a snapshot to and you can change the folder there. Uh, save up uh, uploaded files in and then select a different folder if you wish there. For the main interface you have your preview window here like you'd expect from most video editors including your rewind and play button, your slider, full screen button here. Over here you have your library or if you click here you get to your different titles you can add. Click here and you get to your effects. They're actually not bad effects really for a cheaper editor because remember this doesn't cost a couple hundred pounds this is a cheaper editor picture in picture or pip some effects there I don't really think that would be it. something you'd use much here are some transitions and here is a nice little feature of a, a little basic intro and credits with various templates they are quite simple and straightforward so it would be nice though if they could perhaps add a bit more animation to some of them and perhaps add some more but it's a nice addition. Now down here you have your typical timeline. We can click here to split. We can then select a clip, click here and make adjustments such as brightness, contrast, hue, saturation auto enhance which will auto denoise and enhance let's just click that change the speed here rotation options and flip options up here then a tab for audio you can change the pitch of the audio the fade in and fade out on the audio boost the volume if it's too quiet what you recorded or turn it down and reset here let's hit ok out of interest let's just do the same thing here on that clip you then have here power tool. This is another little editor. It doesn't do a huge amount. In fact I don't really see it needs to be in a separate window. Uh, this clip I can't really show you very well what it does but tilt shift you can add if you know what tilt shift effect is. Used a lot in photography. Mosaic, apply, add and you see you could blur out perhaps say we didn't want this to be visible say it as a password you can add that there or delete it similar idea down here if you have a person's face somewhere here you want to blur out you could blur it out or you could add a different face like one of these images such as this one here instead over the top of the face which is a neat little addition that not all editors have then you can preview and stop it here let's hit reset and ok it you then have your typical rotation and crop. Here is split which I just showed you how to do. Here is basically delete. 
you can record a voiceover from your USB microphone, video recording, basically is a webcam. And resources is to get to any movie, images and audio files that you have stored. So let's go to transition, no where is transition, here isn't it, okay let's add a transition in between the clips let's play back the playing back down here and here this seems instant it doesn't seem to have an option for background background rendering but it doesn't seem to need it it seems to do well enough anyway yeah, sweet and save 30 percent which is basically just um, which is basically just a sweep there you go we can add a title let's do that here no let's have let's have this weird one let's put it down here let's shift it over let's double click double clicking the title down in your timeline brings up its parameters so you can select a different preset if you want I'm just going to leave it alone and you type your thing here such as this is my title you then have your fonts, font size, bold, italic, and alignment here. Go to customize, you can change your fill color, add an image. I'm going to add, yes, I'll add that for now. Go to border, I don't think I'll add a border. Let's add a shadow though, shall we? And go to color, leave it at the default color. Uh, yeah, let's have it like that. You could also add a background as well, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to hit OK. Now let's try playing the title software. You can check for updates. You see I'm ver using version 10, which is the latest version at this time. Not too bad. Uh, it's got a decent selection of titles, although, again, I'd like to see more because you never have too many. Down here, you're on your timeline button. You can go to storyboard mode here. Export. You have a good selection of exporting formats. If you're using, say, iMovie on Mac, which isn't available on Windows, which this program is, so it doesn't really matter anyway, you have a large selection of formats here. In iMovie, you pretty much just have Move or MP4, that is it. Here you could select a WMV and AVI, you could select a FLV for Flash, you could select MKV, or a whole bunch of others, including Apple ProRes. You could then uh, configure it various options here including bit rate, frame rate etc. You could also go to devices and select a certain device you want such as the Apple TV, Apple TV 1080p. You can then go to uh, and you can also go to YouTube and upload it straight to YouTube, Facebook, Vimeo or burn it to DVD. There is no Blu-ray option which is a pity as you sort of expect it these days so it'd be nice to see the addition of Blu-ray support. So let's you also create a menu here, so let's close. So what do I think of the editor? Well on Mac you do have, with free with new Macs, iMovie. So you might want to start there before you dish out money. But this one, of course, has a few more options including lots of file format support. So definitely if you want the addition of file format support in your editor, this is the way to go. So I find it a nice little intermediate between iMovie and uh, Final Cut Pro 10. So thanks for watching. Please like and share this video and if you could do me a huge favor and subscribe to my YouTube channel as it only takes a minute and well actually only takes a few seconds and it'll help me out a lot. Thanks.